welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So at the beginning of December, I was contacted by one of the channel subscribers with this SDR Sharp screenshot of a mysterious signal that they were not able to identify. Now the subscriber went on to say that they see this signal appear many times per day while they're attempting to receive weather satellites on nearby frequencies. This particular subscriber is located in India, but as the signal appeared to be quite close to other known satellite downlink frequencies, I started to investigate this mysterious signal. Now, first off, we know that this signal was happening multiple times a day and on multiple frequencies at the same time. So I asked the subscriber to record an IQ recording of this signal and then send it over to me for further analysis. Now, upon receiving the IQ recording and playing it back, I could see that there was a frequency drift over time. Now, this is a good indication of a Doppler shift, which is a decrease in frequency as a satellite passes fast overhead. Now, knowing that the signal is within the satellite downlink portion and we're apparently seeing a Doppler shift, it was time to perform some further searches. After a short amount of time, I was able to determine that these signals are coming from Orbcom satellites. So what are Orbcom satellites? Well, Orbcom have a global network of around 31 low Earth orbiting satellites, pretty much covering the entire Earth at the same time. Now, Orbcom have over 2 million billable subscribers, which means it's a well-utilized system. There are 16 gateway Earth stations around the globe, which are used to send and receive data from the connected devices via the Orbcom satellites. Now, this service is also licensed to be in over 130 countries and regions, meaning that it can cover pretty much the entire world. So what kind of devices connect to these Orbcom satellites? Well, there will be IoT devices, M2M devices, and a whole range of industrial devices which are used for asset tracking, monitoring heavy equipment, maritime, oil and gas utilities, and even government. They can even be used for AIS, which is the aircraft ADSB equivalent, but for boats and water vehicles. Now, each of these satellites has a 56 kilobits per second backbone, which uses the popular TDMA multiplexing scheme and QPSK modulation. Now, as a result of this, we're able to decode some of the announcement packets using just an SDR and some specialist software. Now, the core client data which is being transmitted through these satellites is encrypted. So as far as I know, we're not able to see any of the packet data, but we are able to view some of it. Now, as these satellites are licensed to be used between 137 and 150 megahertz, we can easily build an antenna or use a pre-made antenna that's suitable for the two meter handband. Now, obviously, if you want to receive a better signal strength or signal to noise ratio, then you could look at using something like a V-dipole or even a Yagi beam antenna and track the sats as they pass overhead. So let's take a look at some software and see what we can receive and decode from the Orbcom satellites as they pass overhead. Now the software that I'm using here to decode the Orbcom signals is called Orbcom Plotter. Now it's not a free software, but you do get 21 days free trial, so you can try it out before you purchase. Now as you can see here, part of the decoded messages are in plain ASCII, which shows us the uplink frequencies available for this particular satellite, which we're decoding its downlink. Now presumably this is to tell any connected devices which frequency it should transmit its data on. Now to set up Orbcom Plotter is quite simple. Now, as long as your SDR software is set to narrow FM on the correct frequency and outputting its audio to VB audio cable, you just need to configure your home location, the audio source, in my case, I'm selecting VB audio cable and enable the TLE if you want to use the map and then just click the required data filters. Although the default filters will be enough to start decoding some data. 
Now, if you want to see the location of any particular Orbcom satellite, then you can use the Orbitron software to show where they are in real time. Now, I'm pretty sure that all these here on screen are not in service, but it will give you an idea of how well Orbcom provides its global service around the world. Now, there are some other software packages available for decoding Orbcom signals, such as Orbcom Receiver, but I personally didn't try them yet. Now, if you've had any success with this, then please let me know down in the comment section below, as I believe it will be really interesting for others to read as well. Also, if you've tested any particular antenna type, please leave details below, as I'm sure it would prove useful for others. I'll also leave a link down to the Orbcom receiver page, because it actually has quite a bit of information, which you'll probably find useful. It also has a list of Orbcom satellites that the developers seem to think that are currently live and active now. That may help when it comes to tracking your next pass. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd just like to say a massive thank you to my YouTube members, my subscribers, and also my patrons who help on a monthly basis. Until the next video, guys, stay safe, take care, and I hope you have a great 2021. Until the next video, see you then.